and we are live, man. What's going on, YouTube? It is Set and Key Media back in the building, man. You got your boy in here, Key, your uh, favorite big foreheaded YouTuber, man. We got another night of content lined up for y'all, man. Happy to be back. Happy to see y'all. We're going to kick it off with some criticism uh, from Biden or about Biden, I should say, about long range missiles being approved to send and be used by Ukraine. Uh, we got some reactions from uh, Sky News Australia. Zelensky chimed in. Uh, Trump shared some remarks on the situation as well. And you know we got some other videos to follow that up as well, man. But we're going to get right into this content. Like the video before we do. Let's get into the show. Has made what could be a decisive move on the war in Ukraine as world leaders prepared to hold the talks at the G20 in Brazil. He's lifted restriction on the use of American long-range weapons to strike deeper into Russia. President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use US-made weapons to strike deep into Russia, marking a significant reversal of previous US policy. Yes, so the upstanding policy uh, didn't allow the use of long-range missiles. And now as he's leaving office, I guess uh, uh, a gift to the Trump administration, uh, uh, a, a leaving out gift he's uh he's approving these long-range missiles to be used which begs the question which begs the question why 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 biden why <laughs> decision made on Sunday sparked immediate backlash from various political figures and Trump supporters on social media platforms like X. So Representative uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, she shared a tweet that says on his way out of office, Biden has dangerously or is dangerously trying to start World War III by authorizing Ukraine, the use of U.S. long-range missiles in Russia. And yeah, it does beg the question. Like I said, why? What is the strategy? What's the idea? I mean, he had been silent and stagnant for months. We hadn't really seen much activity from Joe Biden himself. Uh, Kamala, uh, you know, his advisors, delegates were more active in uh, in the in the limelight, in the highlight of things. But Biden was uh, essentially mute. And unless you're counting those comments he made uh, about Trump supporters calling him garbage about a week before the election, but. I guess on his way out, he deemed this a necessary move. Here's another tweet that says the American people gave a mandate on November 5th against these exact uh, America last night decisions and do not want to fund or fight foreign wars. We want to fix our own problems. Enough of this. It must stop. Biden over here showing neocon as he walks out. <laughs> In a twist of events, Biden comes out as a neoconservative before he leaves office. sharing some tweets um giving some insight sharing some remarks on the scenario on the circumstance we got paul a size pull up uh handle bubble bath girl shout out biden disapproved ukraine to bomb russia with long-range u.s weapons he's escalating war to try and tank trump's term <laughs> to comment on Biden's decision, but Donald Trump Jr. criticized it on X, accusing the military industrial complex of pushing for World War III. <music> Donald Trump Jr. shares a tweet. He says, the military industrial complex seems to want to make sure they get World War III going before my father has a chance to create peace and save lives. Gotta lock in those trillions. Life be damn imbeciles. This 
decision follows a major Russian missile and drone assault on Ukraine, targeting critical infrastructure in the largest attack in months. A new Russian onslaught across Ukraine. Missiles and drones strike critical infrastructure in the biggest attack in months. Amid the carnage, though, a breakthrough in American military support. U.S. President Joe Biden has finally agreed to allow Ukraine to fire long-range U.S. missiles against targets in... Okay. ...inside Russia. Ukraine's leader signaled their use is just a matter of time. Plan posilenia Ukraine is a plan for victory. The plan to strengthen Ukraine is the victory plan, which I presented to our partners. One of its key points is long-range capabilities for our army. Today, there's a lot of talk in the media about us receiving permission for respective actions. But strikes are not carried out with words. Such things are not announced. Missiles will speak for themselves. They certainly will. But Joe Biden's decision comes just weeks before Donald Trump returns to the White House, a man who's vowed to end the war quickly, though without saying how. The major shift in U.S. policy is apparently in part in response to this. That is kind of funny because Biden's move is clearly incongruent with what Trump has already said he's going to do. I'm going to end the war. I'm going to end the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, I'm going to have both the foreign leaders on the phone. As president-elect, I'm going to shut that down. I will push for peace. So for Biden to make this move, again, I'm questioning the strategy and what his uh, what his goal was. It seems to be ulterior, ulterior motivated because, again, this is in uh, direct contrast to what Trump and the direction of Trump's campaign is trying to go in. So, I mean, and again, if you consider... Um, the timeline and, you know, how things have been pacing in Russia and Ukraine. Again, this is the largest strike in months. So things have, uh, uh, you know, succeeded to it. The, the conflict has succeeded to a degree. There has been a, 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 a period of um, a, um, a period of peace, in a sense, um, or a period of um, a recession in the war, I will say. But this right here has obviously sparked not only conversation, but tensions as well. North Korea sending troops to fight for Russia. Here they're pictured preparing to move forward. The North Koreans are thought to be helping Russian forces repel a Ukrainian assault into the Kursk region of Russia. That could be where the US missiles are used first. Then the next question will be how the Kremlin responds. Mm -hmm something that will surely be discussed on the sidelines of a meeting of world leaders due to take place here in Brazil amid tight security. Russian President Vladimir Putin has repeatedly warned the West they'd be playing with fire if they allowed Ukraine to use their long-range missiles inside Russia, even saying it could start a global conflict. US and British officials have cautioned against listening to Moscow's threats, yet there had been hesitancy about this specific step. That's now gone. Russia's war divides global opinion, with Western allies pitched against Moscow and its friends. Back on the ground in Ukraine, though, yet more suffering from another Russian strike. This country will surely be hoping the UK and others will now follow America's lead so its forces can be free to fight back harder. All right, and that just gives us a little bit of a updated idea of kind of what's going on in the situation. I do have an interesting video I'd like to share on top of that with the chat, man. We got some people piling up in here already, man. How's everybody doing tonight, man? Hopefully everybody's doing well. Go ahead and double tap the screen for me, man. We just getting into tonight's stream. It's going to be a fire one. Make sure to like the video, man. Like I said, you get the three buttons in the upper right hand corner. Let's do it, y'all. Let's get the mods in here. Let's get the casuals, the usuals in here. Let's get some new folks in here, man. I'm trying to make it a fire stream tonight, man. Let's have some fun. Set and key media Monday night, man. Let's get the week going off good. Let's get it jumping. Let's get it cracking. Let's do it. Let's do it.
All right, so again, I got this little video I wanted to add for context because y'all are probably wondering, like, what are these long range missiles? Are they effective? Are they a game changer? Well, let's get into a little video that kind of details their exact use and uh, how effective they are. Shout out AI Telly. Ukraine has been employing the Army Tactical Missile System, also pronounced ATACAMS. They were used against Russian targets and occupied Ukrainian territory for over a year. These missiles have been used to strike air bases in the occupied Crimean Peninsula and military positions in the Zaporizhia region. However, the United States had previously prohibited Ukraine from deploying these long-range missiles inside Russia until now. The Lockheed Martin ballistic missiles, among the most powerful provided to Ukraine, have a range of up to 300 kilometers, which translates to around 186 miles. The okay. shift in U.S. policy reportedly comes in response to the recent deployment of North Korean troops to support Russia in the Kursk border region, where Ukraine has held territory since August. Let's take a close. 180 so miles. That's a. Mm, that's about a two or three hour drive give or take that's a pretty lengthy distance like that's some pretty dangerous ballistics right there you can go about from one greater city to the next major greater city like that's from from here to cleveland almost just about that's crazy from here to cincinnati or something like that closer look at why the attack M is considered such a high value asset for ukraine first let's consider the m777 howitzer while it is a cost-effective artillery system, it has a relatively limited... Oh, and shout out Hellbat, man. First super chat of the stream, man. I got you, Hellbat. Good look. We appreciate the support. One of the casuals, one of the regulars, one of the mods. Uh, I think he was one of the members at one point in time, man. Shout out Hellbat. One, what's up, everyone? Let's have another good stream and good debates with educated people. Lots of love and let's keep it clean, man. You already know the vibes, Hellbat. Shout out. Appreciate that. Let's get back into it. Limited range of just 25 miles, which is approximately 40 kilometers. This makes it effective for battlefield operations, but restricts its reach to targets closer to the front lines. Next, we have the High Mars or High Mobility Artillery Rocket System. Drop a like, man, if y'all enjoying the content so far. Let me know if y'all like the video. I'm trying to add some context on these uh, attackums. I don't even know if that's how you say them. That's how I'm going to say it, though. Because, uh, yeah, these uh, seem to be a game changer. They said these missiles, these ballistics can uh, reach distances up to 180 plus miles. You know, for reference, that's about, I'm in central Ohio, Columbus to be exact. That's like from here to Cincinnati, from here to Cleveland or something like that. It's a crazy distance. So they're being allowed to now send these uh, long range ballistics from inside of Ukraine to Russia to valued targets in Russia. Crazy. This system effectively doubles the range of the M777 howitzer, extending its reach to about 50 miles. This is approximately 80 kilometers. Finally, we come to the Attackams Army Tactical Missile System. The Attackams significantly outclasses both the howitzer and high Mars in terms of range, capable of striking targets up to 190 miles, approximately 300 kilometers away. That's crazy. This range allows Ukraine to penetrate deep into Russian-controlled territory, targeting critical infrastructure, logistics hubs, and command centers. Let's compare this with the Russians' artillery. First, we have the Soviet-era D-30 howitzer. This is a towed artillery system with a range of approximately 13 miles, which is around 22 kilometers. Next, we have the Russian self-propelled artillery gun. This system employs a move-and-shoot strategy, allowing it to quickly reposition after firing, making it harder to target. It has a range of about 25 miles, this is roughly 40 kilometers, giving it an edge over older systems like the D-30 by combining mobility and firepower. Moving further up the range spectrum, we have the BM-30 Smirch Multiple Launch Rocket System. It can deliver powerful salvos over a range of 45 miles, which around 70 kilometers. Finally, Russia holds a significant advantage with the Kintel missile. This missile can be launched from the ground or air, typically from fighter jets, and boasts an extraordinary range of approximately 2,000 kilometers around 1,242 miles. Oh my god. No way. Bro, 
I'm gonna have to do my research on some of this military equipment, some of this military weaponry. 1200 miles? Yo, chat. Yo. Now, I'm no military strategist, but if you got something like that on your side, boy, I feel bad for the enemy. I feel bad for whoever you aim that shit at, my guy. Like, yo, let me see that again, chat. Finally, Russia holds a significant advantage with the Kinzel missile. This missile can be launched from the ground or air, typically from fighter jets, and boasts an extraordinary range of approximately 2,000 kilometers around 1,242 miles. Let's take a quick look into the Atakim's missile and its variants. This missile was designed to operate from two platforms, HIMARS and MLRS. HIMARS carries one missile pod, whereas the M270 carries a two-section pods. Let's explore the basic tactics and maneuvers involved in launching this missile. Step 1. The Lockheed C-5 Galaxy aircraft transports the MLRS to a designated safe location. Once loaded, it can be rolled on and off this aircraft and becomes op Shout out Lockheed. Wink, wink. Shout out Boeing. Wink, wink. Operational within 15 minutes of landing. Step two. The crew unloads the MLRS along with the reloader and launchers. Step three. The battalion travels nearly 70 kilometers or 40 miles closer to the front lines. Step four. The control and command center designate targets to be destroyed. Step 5. In high threat situations, the MLRS utilizes a shoot and scoot capability to enhance crew and platform survivability. The MLRS capacity to deploy, shoot, move, and reload within minutes significantly impedes an enemy's ability to locate and target the firing platform. Step 6. The MLRS and HIMARS conduct reload operations using a reload arm assembly to reload missiles. Ukraine needs this long-range missile because they had wow. invaded the Russian Kursh region by cutting through a small town in Sutsa. This caught the Russian army by surprise, and what's particularly interesting is that they accomplished- Shout out AI Telly, man. If you like in this video and find it informative, man, leave a like. Go ahead and drop a like. Don't tap the screen. We got almost 100 of y'all in here already, man. We just getting started. Let's make it a fire stream. Let's get as many people as we can in on the dialogue, in on the discourse. Let's have a fire conversation in here tonight, man. Monday night, hopefully every night, or everybody's night is going well. We're going to start this week off on a fire note, man. We're going to get informed. We're going to have some laughs, and it's going to be a good stream, man. But like the video. Let's get the likes up. Uh, Yeah, let's get the likes up, guys. This with just a small mechanized brigade. These brigades included around 11 main battle tanks and 20 infantry fighting vehicles, such as the American Bradley and the eight-wheeled armored fighting vehicle Striker, along with a significant number of FPV drones costing only $1,000 each. These drones can cause havoc and help damage or destroy tanks like the Russian T-90, which costs around $4.5 million each, shifting the tide on the battlefield. The Ukrainian forces, instead of attacking head-on, executed this invasion by maneuvering around heavily defended checkpoints and attacking the enemy from the rear. This strategy caught the Russian army by surprise while reinforcements were cut off by HIMARS artillery systems, thus enabling them to take over 1,000 square kilometers, which translates to around 386 square miles. This is indeed a large area for Ukraine to defend. The Russians experienced a complete intelligence failure regarding the Ukrainians. For the last two months, Ukrainian troops have been slowly amassing. To avoid suspicion, they began adding troops in small groups over time. Ukraine knew it could not compete head-on with the massive Russian army in its backyard, so instead of launching a direct attack, they adopted a different approach. This gradual buildup allowed them to remain undetected. However, Russian bloggers were already reporting the military buildup to Russian generals. Despite these reports, the activity was dismissed as a deception meant to draw Russian forces away from Pokros into Ukraine. Now speaking of strategy, let's take a look at how they managed to pull this off. The Ukrainians employed one of the most tried and tested strategies, concentration of force. Given that the Ukrainian army was much smaller than the Russian army, only about 10% of its size, they had to be strategic. Approximately 800,000 Russian soldiers were stationed along the borders, waiting for the right moment to launch an offensive and crush Ukraine. 
So the Ukrainians counterattack and identified a weak spot in the Kursk region, mobilized all their troops to execute a flanking maneuver and focused on taking control of the single checkpoint. After securing it, they regrouped with their current forces and mechanized armor to re-engage and eliminate the remaining checkpoints. They repeated this process over and over until all Russian pockets of resistance were destroyed. It's a clever strategy that made their army appear much larger, just like what some of the greatest commanders in history have done also know as defeat in detail. To better understand the strategy, let's look at the numbers from each country. Russia had 1,300,000. Very good stuff. Very informative stuff, man. Hopefully y'all liking the content so far, man. Leave a like if so. Shout out AI Telly and shout out Hellbat12, man. Five more bucks. Biden's office actively trying to start World War III just so they can blame it on Trump. It's in disgusting how they are operating. Nah, facts, bro. And I, like I say, what is this? Like, this is like some shit. This is like an advanced version of farting before you leave the room. Like, damn, bro. Like, you're leaving. You just, what is this, a parting gift or some shit? Like, what the hell, bro? Well, the rest of us got to deal with this shit. I know you're going to be on the beach falling asleep drinking uh, pineapple juice uh, on the Delaware sand, but the rest of us got to deal with this shit. Biden, what the hell, man? Like, come on, bro. Show some respect. I mean, at this point, I don't even know if it's Biden calling the shots, his handlers, Kamala. There's so many narratives flying around, it's hard to tell. But, bro, not cool. Totally not cool. Not going to lie, man. And shout out Zola of two bucks. Adding on to that, he says 64 more days. I ain't going to lie. I'm counting them. One by one. One by one. Especially when Biden out here doing shit like this, bro. This was uncalled for. Like I said, it's like farting as you leave the room. Like, come on, bro. Nobody asked you to do that. You know, I know you're leaving, but the rest of us is kind of still in here. We still kind of got to deal with this shit. So, yeah, bro, like, what the hell? 120,000 active soldiers ready for combat, supported by a reserve force of 2 million. Supplementing this core military strength were 250,000 paramilitary units, adding a formidable layer of defense to the nation. Meanwhile, Ukraine maintained a strong military presence with 900,000 active soldiers. In reserve, 1,200,000 citizens stood ready to defend their homeland, bolstered by 100,000 paramilitary units, all prepared for the challenges ahead. Let's take a look at this mechanized brigades and the various vehicles used during the attack. Interestingly, the tip of the spear might be the Soviet-era UR-77 mine-clearing vehicles. So how does it work? The mine clearing system operates by opening the lid and launching a line charge filled with explosives over this mine field. Once the line charge is in place, it is detonated, creating a shockwave and blast pressure that either neutralizes or detonates any mines within the vicinity of the explosion. As a mechanized brigade, they rely on main battle tanks like the Ukrainian T-84, which is based on the Soviet-era T-80 tank. These are often accompanied by the more common T-64 tanks, a model introduced in the early 1960s, during the Soviet era. At least one infantry fighting vehicles, such as the Bradley, will also be heading the convoy. Interestingly, during the Gulf War, M2 Bradleys destroyed more armored vehicles and tanks than the M1 Abrams. As a mechanized brigade, they were also supported by the American Striker, which can also be used as a command and control as well for carrying troops and infantry units during assaults. However, the BMP-1 also makes up a significant portion of the mechanized fighting vehicles, along with this BTR-80. This is an 8x8-wheeled amphibious armored personnel carrier built during the Soviet era. This is scenario one of the... The amphibious military weaponry. I'm talking about land and sea, baby. Oh, man. Some of this shit was sci-fi, a sci-fi concept, an abstract concept 10, 15, 20 years ago. But it's coming to life. I love learning about shit like this. So uh, if you in the same boat as me, man, if you enjoying the video, if you found it uh, informative, go ahead and drop a like, man. We appreciate the support. Shout out AI Telly. The Russian strategy on Ukraine. The Russian army is currently focused on closing the gap in Vachensk, a strategic area that plays a crucial role in their military objectives. The primary aim of the Russian forces is to secure this line by indirectly annexing the surrounding region, thereby strengthening their control and cutting off Ukrainian advances. In response, Ukrainian forces launched an attack, which according to Russian sources began in the early morning at around 7. This is the mechanized Ukrainian troops which reportedly crossed the border through this narrow area, initiating a counteroffensive designed to disrupt Russian plans. 
By executing this maneuver, the Ukrainians are strategically forcing the Russian military to redeploy personnel from Valchansk to the Kursk region, weakening the Russian presence in this area. One of the key objectives under this scenario is to create an opportunity for the Ukrainian army to retake Valchansk. By stretching Russian resources thin and compelling them to defend multiple fronts, the Ukrainians may gain the upper hand in this critical region. Ukraine also wants to hit Russian air base with attack Takims missiles because Russia has been dropping these devastating Fab 500 flying bombs using the Sukhoi 34 aircraft from this base. These aircraft have been wreaking havoc on Ukrainian forces with their devastating glide bombs, making the airbase a critical target in the conflict. The primary structure of this weapon is substantial, with the standard model weighing approximately 500 kilograms, which translates to 1,100 pounds. The most crucial component of the glide bomb is the unified gliding and correction module. It has probably a Russian Glumis guidance system commonly referred to as the UMPK bomb kit, which ensures the bomb's desired trajectory oh, and accuracy. Damn, now they got bombs on wings. Oh, game over. Game over. Game over. I, I ain't gonna lie. Bombs on wings? Bombs on wings? With UAV technology? Yo. During deployment. Additionally, the tail stabilizer is an essential part of this glide weapon. It provides aerodynamic stability when dropped under gravity. At the forefront of the bomb is the fuse adapter, a critical component that houses the triggering mechanism. Positioned immediately behind the fuse adapter is the auxiliary booster, which plays a vital role in the activation of the TNT bomb. The Sukhoi Su-34 NATO reporting main fullback is a Soviet-origin Russian twin-engine all-weather supersonic medium-range fighter bomber or strike aircraft. Let's take a look at how this works in a super simplified animation. Step 1. Sukhoi fighter jets can approach a target closely, staying just outside the range of enemy air defense systems. Step 2. As soon as the pilot flips the switch, the bomb is released. The safety pin is pulled by gravity as the bomb falls. Step 3. Initially, the wing kit is upside down. Once the bomb is safely away from the fighter bomber, the wing kit slowly turns and deploys its wings, transforming the bomb into a glide weapon. Yo, that shit hard. This conversion gives it a range. Wow, that shit is low-key hard. I'm sorry, that shit is cold. Wings on the bomb is crazy. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey. I can't lie. Wait a minute. Range of up to 70 kilometers which is approximately 43 miles. Step 4. The wings can make small, precise adjustments during flight, guided by the GLONASS, the Russian equivalent of GPS, directing the bomb to the pre-assigned longitude and latitude that is the designated target area. Yo. Now nah, that's advanced. I ain't gonna lie, that's advanced. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have something uh, to, the, to the equivalent of that. You know, over here, you know, in the U.S., but God damn, that shit is hard. I'm not going to lie, man. If y'all thought that shit was cool, man, leave a like, man. We just getting started on tonight's stream, man. We, we're going to keep going. But that shit right there, that was pretty goddamn cool. Wings on the bomb. Hmm. What will they think of next? But a little bit more on the uh, Biden decision to approve said long-range missiles. Here is uh, Zelensky with some comments which could have dire consequences for the world before wandering off into the Amazon rainforest. Yes, the bizarre footage came as Joe Biden approved the use of long-range US-supplied missiles by Ukraine to get deeper into Russian territory. The Biden administration will allow Kiev use of ATACMS to strike Russia for the first time since the war began. The news emerged from the Biden administration as Joe Biden was in the Amazon rainforest on Sunday announcing a multi-million dollar plan to reforest the Amazon. The president took no questions about the bombshell Ukraine announcement during his press conference, instead bizarrely just walked off into the rainforest. President of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, appeared to threaten Russia. The plan to strengthen Ukraine is the victory plan, which I presented to our partners. 
One of its key points is long-range capabilities for our army. Today, there's a lot of talk in the media about us receiving permission for respective actions. But strikes are not carried out with words. Such things are not announced. Missiles will speak for themselves. They certainly will. Russian President Vladimir Putin then responded to the news, not mincing his words and threatening to use nuclear weapons in the war. In the updated version of the document, aggression against Russia by any non-nuclear state, but with the support of a nuclear state, is proposed to be considered as their joint attack on Russia. Russia will also consider the possibility of using nuclear weapons when receiving reliable information about a massive launch of means of aerospace attack. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh god damn. I ain't gonna lie. <sighs> World War Three. No, but in all serious though, uh, in all seriousness, he is essentially saying like they will respond um, uh, uh, as they see fit with whatever means of force they deem necessary up to nuclear weaponry if uh, countries are colliding with each other to use long range missiles, which Biden just to prove for Ukraine to do. So yeah, I mean, if you're following that thought path, then this is a, a pretty line, a pretty bad storyline, a pretty scary one. Um, Honestly, all I have to say right now in regards to this is let's just hope Trump can, can intervene and interfere as quick as possible. Um, he said he could end the war um, as president-elect. And I mean, maybe that's why Biden is testing that theory. But I'm hoping he can get these two men, Zelensky and Putin, on the horn and settle something out. Uh, hash this whole thing out, squash the beef, whatever, what have you. Because, uh, yeah, Putin just sat, said right here. They will respond with nuclear weaponry, with a nuclear response, nuclear deterrence, if they deem uh, said force necessary. And their crossing of our state border. This includes strategic and tactical aircraft, as well as cruise missiles and drones, hypersonic and other delivery vehicles. Russia reserves the right to use nuclear weapons in case of aggression including if the enemy using conventional weapons poses a critical threat. He spoke about this possibility a few months ago, warning against the direct participation of NATO countries in the war. Online commentators are in uproar about Biden's aggressive move, particularly as he is at the end of his term. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene said, on his way out of office, Joe Biden is dangerously trying to start World War III by authorizing Ukraine the use of US long-range missiles into Russia. Enough of this. It must stop. Incoming President Donald Trump warned against increasing conflict in the region. We have never been closer to World War III than we are today under Joe Biden. A global conflict between nuclear armed powers would mean death and destruction on a scale unmatched in human history. It would be nuclear Armageddon. Not I see some, uh, some libs or some Joe Biden fans, the ones that are still left. I see them defending the decision by saying, oh, it's to gain leverage when uh, peace talks are had, when peace talks are, are being facilitated. And I'm just like, hold on a second. Like, y'all might, y'all seem to have a clear misunderstanding of diplomacy. You don't piss the person you're trying to have peace talks with before you propose said peace talks. Like, that's not the best way to get a resolution or to go about conflict resolution in general. Like, if I have a beef with my brother, I'm not going to say something. I'm not going to add fuel to the fire before I go and try and squash the beef. It just didn't make any sense. So this decision is obviously agitated Russia and Putin, and they've threatened a nuclear response. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out or understand the the thought path of people who are saying, well, it was for it was for leverage and 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 uh and uh. Once uh, resolutions are, or once peace talks are had, and I'm just like, yeah, that's the wrong approach. Nothing is more important than avoiding that nightmare. We will avoid it. 
but we need new leadership. Every day this proxy battle in Ukraine continues, we risk global war. We must be absolutely. Oh, shout out James Foley, man. Appreciate you, James. Two bucks. He says, uh, shout out, James, man. I'm okay with war. Just don't hurt our big booty. Yeah, I'm assuming that's female dogs. Okay. He said, don't hurt, don't hurt the hoes with the wagons or the BBLs. Save all the wagons in the BBLs. Drop as many bombs as you want to. Just save the hoes with the wagons, the booties, the BBLs. Because my, my man James asked. My man James says so, so say the hoes. Absolutely clear that our objective is to immediately have a total secession of hostilities. All shooting has to stop. This is the central issue. We need peace without delay. The Ukraine ambassador to Australia remains optimistic and believes Trump's presidency will help end the war between Russia and Ukraine. Vassal, what does Trump change in your view? Is this, does his election bring mixed feelings for you or do you think he will be good for Ukraine and ending the war? We, we rely on, on American decisive leadership uh, with the Trump administration. It's difficult to preempt what's going to be uh, his policy on Ukraine, on Russia, on Europe, and on others' foreign policy. However, we, we try to be optimistic. Uh, his view of the world and his view to foreign affairs as peace through strength is something that we see aligned with other priorities and we see that that can help us end the war. It's difficult to speculate what, how that's going to be developing. However, we remain optimistic and of course, mm. uh, President Zelensky congratulated uh, President Trump. They had a good meeting uh, on yeah. the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in September. Uh, and we'll, we'll see how it will be all shaping up. Well, damn. All right. Yes, yeah, very interesting stuff. Russia so, says uh, the decision by the U.S. to allow their long... For every action, there is an equal or greater reaction. So you have Biden's decision followed up with the announcement by Putin. These should be a very interesting uh, two months to follow until Donald Trump is ultimately inaugurated in January. So... We went over Biden's decision. We went over Zelensky's uh, response, Putin's response. Now, we played this yesterday, but just to reiterate, let's go over President-elect Trump's response to the matter. It would be nuclear Armageddon. Nothing is more important than avoiding that nightmare. We will avoid it, but we need new leadership. Every day this proxy battle in Ukraine continues, we risk global war. We must be absolutely clear that our objective is to immediately have a total secession of hostilities. All shooting has to stop. This is the central issue. We need peace without delay. In addition, there must also be a complete commitment to dismantling the entire globalist neocon establishment that is perpetually dragging us into endless wars, pretending to fight for freedom and democracy abroad, while they turn us into a third world country and a third world dictatorship right here at home. The State Department, the defense bureaucracy, the intelligence services, and all of the rest need to be completely overhauled and reconstituted to fire the deep staters and put America first. We have to put America first. Finally, we have to finish the process we began under my administration of fundamentally reevaluating NATO's purpose and NATO's mission. Our foreign policy establishment keeps trying to pull the world into conflict with a nuclear armed Russia based on the lie that Russia represents our greatest threat. But the greatest threat to Western civilization today is not Russia. It's probably, more than anything else, ourselves and some of the horrible USA-hating people that represent us. It's the abolition of our national borders. It's the failure to police our own cities. It's the destruction of the rule of law from within. It's the collapse of the nuclear family and 
fertility rates like nobody can believe is happening. It's the Marxists who would have us become a godless nation worshiping at the altar of race and gender and environment. And it's the globalist class that has made us totally dependent on China and other foreign countries that basically hate us. Mm. These globalists want to squander all of America's strength, blood, and treasure, chasing monsters and phantoms overseas while keeping us distracted from the havoc they're creating right here at home. These forces are doing more damage to America than Russia and China could ever have dreamed. Evicting the sick and corrupt establishment is the monumental task for the next I president. I and I'm the only one who can do A full frontal attack on bureaucracy, and I love it. And it starts at the head and it works its way down. Which is to say, Donald Trump is leading the charge against some of these bureaucratic agencies, some of these deep state affiliates who have reason, who are heavily incentivized to keep these wars uh, brewing, to keep these wars afoot. Um, they profited off of off of bodies, off of war, off of bloodshed, and it isn't in the best interest of America or its citizens because it doesn't really serve us any purpose. Matter of fact, it costs us more than it makes us. I mean. The people that are making money from it aren't the average citizen, so it isn't doing any good to the to your everyday Joe or to your everyday Sarah or whatever. So I love it. I love I love the the conscious decision making behind you know calling these uh, these entities out, and it seems like he's really gonna carry out the attack or uh, the investigation or the dismantling of some of these agencies or some of these uh, deep state affiliates. Do it. I'm the only one that can get the job done. I know exactly what has to be done. We are unified by our general. Right. Right. So shout out. That was Trump's response. 